This trading view indicator finds massive breakouts in the market. And in this short video, we will take a look at exactly how to find and how to use the indicator. We will also take a look at the best settings. And I will also show you guys how you can combine it with another indicator to improve the win rate. Sounds good. Let's get started right away here. All right, so the first thing you want to do is that you want to open up a clean chart. Right now, as I'm speaking, I'm looking at the US oil on a 15 minute time frame. The next thing you want to do is that you want to navigate up here to the indicators tab in TradingView. And then you want to search for Lux Algo and then range. Wait, you want to search for Lux Algo like this and then range detector. And then you want to go down here and open up the indicator by Lux Algo. And as you can see, now the indicator has appeared here on the chart. So now, before we take a look at how to use the indicator and how to combine the indicator with another one to improve the win rate, it's important to go up here and take a look at the best settings for the indicator. So we go up here to the upper left corner and we press on the settings tab right here. The first setting we have to take a look at is the minimum range length. And what this number basically tells us is what is the minimum length of the range before the breakout. And as you can see, the standard number here is 20. And I like to actually increase this length because if we increase the length of the range, it can make the ranges more significant. But at the same time, if you increase this number by too much, you will miss many ranges. So what I like to do here is to increase the minimum length of, you know, around 50%. So we increase this one to 30 right here. The next setting is all about the range width. And by changing this number, you can make the ranges either wider or smaller. So as you can see, if we, for example, change this number to two right here, you can see that the trading ranges will be much wider. But this is actually usually something we don't want to do because this can many times lead to less significant ranges and more false signals. What you can do here is that you can actually decrease the width to, for example, 0 0.9 to find these sort of tighter ranges. But I think that keeping this one as the regular setting of one is usually a good idea. As for the ATR length, this one is a bit tricky. The standard length here is 500 for the ATR. And if you're familiar with the ATR, a look back range of 500 is usually a very large number. So what you can do here is that you can decrease the length of the ATR to perhaps 200 or even uh, even 100 here. Uh, but some traders actually prefer to keep this one at 500 and I'm not really sure why the standard setting for the ATR is 500 here. So if you want to, you can definitely decrease this one by a bit, but let's keep this at 200 right here. As for this, and you can choose to show or not show these gray lines right here. And you may of course wonder what does these gray lines right here and right here mean? Well, the vertical gray line is basically the candle that confirmed the range. So for example, for this range right here, you can see that it is this red candle right here that confirmed this trading range. So if we use our replay tool and jump back here, you can see that if we take a look at the live market right here, you can see that it's not until it's not until this red candle right here that you see that the trading range appear. And what you can also see here is that the range will be blue here. It will be blue until, let me forward a bit here. It will be blue until we break the range. And if the range breaks to the upside, the trading range will be become green. And if we break to the downside, the trading range will become red. So let's go back here to the settings tab for the indicator. I actually recommend to have this background color checked. And as for the rest of the settings here, you can just keep them as they are. So now we are done with the settings and we are ready to press OK. So now then, how do we actually use this indicator to find good breakout trades in the market? Well, what we want to do here is that we want to once again go up here to the indicators tab and we want to open up another indicator. So let's search here for volume and let's actually just open up the simple volume indicator that is just called volume right here. Because what we want to do when we trade breakouts is that we want to have lots of volume when we see the breakout up here. So let's take a look at the first example right here. You can see that the indicator showed us a trading range 
from this point to this point. This is an area where the price is going sideways and as you can see we have pretty small candles and what you also can see and this is a good sign is that we don't have a lot of volume. You can see the volume bars here are pretty small. But what we want to see when the breakout happens, so you can see that we have a strong green candle right here. We actually want to see two things when the breakout happens. The first thing we want to see is that we want to have a strong momentum candle. So we want the candlestick that breaks out to be much larger than the candles in the range right here. And as you can see, this candle right here is much, much larger than the candles in the range, and that is a good sign. The other thing you want to see is that you want to see increased volume. So you take a look at the breakout candle right here, and you go down to the volume indicator, and you can see that on this candle, we also had lots of volume. So when you have a strong momentum candle, and lots of volume and you are breaking out of the range. These are three signs that this is a good breakout trade. Before we take a look at exactly where to set the stop loss and where to set the profit target, let's also take a look at the previous breakout or I mean the next breakout here. You can see that this indicator produced actually two very nice signals in a row. We had this range that led to a massive massive breakout. Uh, the price came down. We had another range that led to yet another massive breakout. And let's take a look at the the next breakout right here so you can see in this case this one is a bit more tricky because you before the real breakout happened you can see that we actually had a sort of fake out right here so if you take a look at this candle right here why was this candle a bad breakout well first of all we can see that the candle itself is definitely not a strong breakout candle you can see we we just slightly went above the resistance and then the price quickly pushed down you can also see here if you go down to the volume bar that we don't have volume so that is definitely a trade you don't want to take uh, then we had a few more candles you can see that the next candle which many traders would would argue was the real breakout was this candlestick right here. And this breakout right here is much better than this candle, but this one is still not really good enough, at least for me. You can see that yes, this candle, one could argue that this was a momentum candle, but you can see that the length of the real body here was, was pretty similar to many other candles. So I would personally not enter on this candle right here. Uh, but if you take a look at the next green candle, you can see that we finally have a strong momentum candle and another thing you can look out for is that if you look down to the volume bar here you can see that this volume bar is much larger than all of the previous volume bars so for that reason i would actually enter the trade on this breakout candle right here so let's take a look at an, an example of our long position so in this case i would enter at the breakout right here so at the candle close of the breakout as for your stop loss here, uh, this one can be a bit tricky. What I usually look out for is that I look out for the most previous low here inside the range. So you can see that here we have a low, right? So we have a low and what I usually do is that I set my stop loss below that low and I also leave some room for some wiggle room. So I would set my stop loss somewhere around here. And as for your risk to reward ratio, when we're looking out for these breakout trades, we're usually looking out for some pretty big profit here. So what you can do here is, of course, you can keep it simple with a risk to reward ratio or of two or something like this, but many times you can actually have lots of more profit here. You can have a risk to reward ratio of three or even more because these kind of strong breakouts from significant trading ranges can many times be the beginning of strong uptrends. So many times you can have a risk to reward ratio of three or even more. You can see in this case, you could have locked in profits, you know, with a risk to reward to reward ratio of seven or even more uh, but this many times is not realistic but a risk to reward ratio of three can many times be a good rule of thumb all right guys so the additional indicator we used in this video was volume and volume is one of these indicators that can improve so many trading strategies so if you have the time today i highly recommend you guys to watch my video about the volume indicator next